This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 3, Recapping Alkyne Reactions. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these alkyne reactions are found in Lessons 3.11 through 16 in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how to match the videos up to your course's textbook at ProtonGuru.com. So if you've watched all the other Proton Guru practice videos for the alkene reactions, you'll recognize a lot of these different reaction conditions. And a lot of these do similar reactions to what we see with alkenes when you simply replace the starting material with an alkyne. So let's go through these one at a time and figure out the similarities and differences. Well, when we see HBr for reaction A, if there was an alkene, you'd have Markovnikov addition of an H and a Br. And in the case of an alkene, you have a carbocation, you have to watch for carbocation rearrangement. Remember that we never have to look for carbocation rearrangement when we're dealing with alkyne starting materials. So it's pretty straightforward that you simply put the bromine on the more substituted carbon and the H on the less substituted carbon, and you're done. The second reaction you would expect with an alkene would lead to the anti Markovnikov addition of an OH and an H. And the same thing happens with the alkyne. The difference that's important when you have the alkyne as the starting material is that you have to recognize when you have a double bond and an OH on the same carbon, that is a species known as an enol. The enol will automatically tautomerize, moving the double bond up to the O. So if we revise this, we would think, well, we're going to move the double bond up to the O, which has to lose its H. So the material we'd actually get as the product would be the double bond to the O, where the O was added to the less substitute carbon. This carbon is this carbon, and there's your ethyl group. Now we have a hydrogenation reaction. With an alkene, we simply add a hydrogen to each of the two sides. But remember, with an alkyne, it's difficult to stop the reaction after adding only one equivalent of H2. You have two carbons here, third carbon, fourth carbon, so you actually make butane in this case. The next reaction, using sodium and ammonia, is a way to actually do a hydrogenation where you can stop after adding one equivalent of hydrogen, in which case you would still have an alkene at the end. One thing about this reaction, it will usually lead to the anti-addition of an H and an H. So the two H's that you add might be this one and this one. So if there was another R group here, you'd have a trans alkene. But in this case, it's neither cis nor trans because you don't have a different R group. Moving on to reaction E, we see bromine. So we think halogenation or halohydrin formation. The second thing is not a nucleophile, so we're simply going to add a bromine and a bromine. And remember that the two bromines that add will be anti to one another, so they must point opposite directions. And we have this E alkene. Moving on to reaction F, we see that we add bromine, which is what we did in this step E, but then we add chlorine. So we'll initially get this material, and then we'll add two chlorines, which would add a chlorine here and the chlorine here, and now we've generated stereocenters. So when we draw the product out, we have a bromine and a chlorine added to each of the two carbons, and we're going to have to get a racemic mixture of those. Reaction G is adding hydrogen using the Lindlars catalyst. The Lindlars catalyst is a great way to facilitate syn addition of just one equivalent of H2 across an alkyne bond. So you would get a cis alkene from that alkyne if you had an internal alkyne. Now here it's going to give us the same product that we saw in reaction D because there is not another R group on the alkyne. So these are the three ways to reduce or add hydrogens to the alkyne. Now we have reaction H. We see the mercury. We say okay we're going to add across the pi bond Markovnikov addition of an OH and an H. But now you see we have an OH on a carbon-carbon double bond, in which case it's going to undergo tautomerization and move the double bond to the O. So that is our expected product. Finally, we have reaction I. Now this first step, sodium hydride, is a very strong base, and it simply takes off this hydrogen from the terminal alkyne and makes an acetylide anion. The second step has bromopropane. So when you have this anion, it's a good nucleophile, Anion is a good nucleophile. This is a primary substrate with a good leaving group. That's perfect for an SN2 reaction. And that's what we get. We've just added an R group where that H used to be by taking the H off and doing the SN2. Now when students see this, they sometimes confuse this reaction with this reaction. And this base can also be replaced with sodium amide. 
just be careful about those. 